I'm not taking an enormous risk in what this video is and what the subject matter of this video is because by all reports and by all industry and fan expectations, 2021 is the year that we're going to make a return to the Sinnoh region. Now, we could be totally wrong and Game Freak could totally, totally change expectations and do something ridiculous. That would probably anger me and a lot of fans, but I'm optimistic that we're finally getting what myself and many have been hoping for for a long time, which are remakes of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. And since we're so confident, or at least I'm so confident that they're coming, let's talk about that a little bit. Twenty twenty one is the twenty fifth anniversary of the Pokemon franchise. We already know that they are planning to do a lot of big things this year. One of which is new Pokemon Snap, which we got a new trailer and a new release date for a week or so ago. That's incredibly exciting. Pokemon Snap is not, to be honest, a game from my childhood, but it's a game that I'm very much looking forward to be playing a, a remake of. And it looks to it looks gorgeous, and it looks like something that I think is going to delight not only a lot of Pokemon fans, but a lot of uh, Nintendo 64 and more retro gamers that maybe fell out with the Pokemon franchise over the years. And I think that's fantastic. But the other thing that we know is coming, or at least we're decently confident of are Diamond and Pearl remakes. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, the fourth generation of Pokemon games, which came out between the years of 2006 and 2009. It spawned one of the more popular uh, animes in the Pokemon history, the Diamond and Pearl anime. It spawned the probably the most beloved remakes in the Pokemon franchise, which are Heart Gold and Soul Silver, which used Diamond and Pearl's engine. It brought about one of the more popular features that Pokemon fans seem to like, which is a refined battle frontier in Platinum from Pokemon Emerald. And it is one of the most iconic regions for a lot of Pokemon fans. It is, it's no mistake to people who know me that it's my favorite region. The Sinnoh region is absolutely gorgeous. It is a snowy region, which is in world and game design something that I prefer. It's one of the reasons why I love the snowy environments that we see in some of the areas of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And it's just the culture and the, the way that the game immerses you in the world that you're playing in is something that I don't think Pokemon has hit on in the same way since. Everything in Diamond and Pearl works off itself, whether it's the culture of the people who live there, the Pokemon that are native to that environment, the music that perfectly encapsulates the different routes and cities that you travel to, and the ability for them to really build off of some things from those games and from Sword and Shield in the upcoming remakes. Now, we've been hearing a lot about these games for years now. We have gotten some leaks recently suggesting that it really is happening and that there could be an official announcement and reveal of these games as early as next month on Pokemon Day, which for those of you who don't know is February 27th. So we'll keep an eye out for that. But one of the biggest t telltale signs recently for me is that in the Sword and Shield expansion pass, the Crown Tundra, we were able to catch every single old fossil Pokemon in the franchise's history except for the Sinnoh fossils, those being Cranidos and Rampardos and Shieldon and Bastiodon. Those Pokemon are nowhere to be found in the Crown Tundra. They are nowhere to be found, I think, in the entire Galar region. Why would that be? Why would they give you every other fossil Pokemon to catch? We've never been able to just catch them before for the first time ever, except for the Sinnoh ones. And why is that? We see a lot of iconic Sinnoh Pokemon seemingly missing from the new games. A lot of question marks, a lot of head scratching. Who knows? On top of this, we know for a fact that it falls perfectly in line with the pl with the timeline of releases that Game Freak has been sticking to pretty much my entire young adult life and my entire teenage life, which is that every other generation we get remakes, and it has been an, a considerable amount of time now since Diamond and Pearl and Platinum came out. We didn't get remakes with uh, the Alola games with Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. We got remakes with X and Y being Oras. We didn't get remakes with Black and White and Black and White 2. We got remakes with Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, and that's kind of where these patterns began. So I think most Pokemon fans are very much of the opinion that this is absolutely happening. We're getting these games. So what do I want to see from them? 
I'm one of those fans that loves remakes. Honestly, because of the, the way I grew up playing Pokemon, I get more excited for the release cycle of remakes than I do for new games. And especially the last two remakes we've gotten were my childhood. Pokemon Emerald was the first game I ever played, so when it was a little 14 year old me getting the announcement of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, I was over the moon. I skipped school the day those games came out, played them the entire day. It was absolutely amazing. I can vividly remember sitting on my couch uh, in the other room connected to my bedroom where I'm recording this now and playing the hell out of Omega of Alpha Sapphire and just absolutely loving it. And now we get the possibility of Diamond and Pearl remakes. Platinum is my second favorite video game of all time. The Sinnoh region is my favorite Pokemon region. The music of these games are my favorite soundtrack of any video game. The bat, the difficulty in Diamond and Pearl is actually good. It's a hard game. Dealing with the Elite Four and dealing with Cynthia, your rival has some tough battles. There are some tough gym battles. There are some tough boss battles. The legendaries are actually difficult to catch. Obviously, if it was up to me, I want all of those things to remain the same in these remakes. But one of the things that I think needs to be added is the wild areas from Sword and Shield. Now, I'm not advocating for replacing the routes connecting the different cities in the Sinnoh region. I'm not at all. I am seemingly one of the very few people that felt that Sword and Shield actually found a good mix between giving players those classic routes that a lot of us know and love, even though some people don't like them, and also giving us those open world areas to explore now. Game Freak did not successfully hit on the open world formula as much as we would want, I think, until we got to the Crown Tundra. I don't think the wild area in the base game is up to snuff with what expectations were for me, and I think the Isle of Armor wild area was definitely a step in the right direction, but Crown Tundra hit it, having that town within the wild area, having different connected routes and different areas that open up and having cave systems that really work with the open world feel of that location. Crown Tundra is the direction Pokemon games need to move in, but I think they can also find a balance between classic routes and those wild areas. And it just so happens that there is a perfect location, two perfect locations within the Sinnoh region to do a wild area. That being the snowy routes up north, which in Platinum was essentially as much of a wild area as you could get with a linear game um, and with a game on tiles. It was a massive area for you to explore and it was very difficult to trudge through the snow. I think you could totally transform that entire northern part of the Sinnoh region with Snow Point City, as well as that northern part of Mount Coronet into a massive wild area, just like you have in the Crown Tundra, which is why you're seeing some Crown Tundra footage of me with this Dialga kind of hanging out, because I think this is a great representation of what that could look like. The other area that I think you could turn into a bit of a wild area, on top of, you could make an argument for the entire thing of Mount Coronet, turning it into an indoor wild area, which I think would be great, is the Great Marsh revolutionize what a safari zone is. Turn it into a wild area with tons of species that are not endemic to the Sinnoh region. Totally flip it on its head, make the Great Marsh an area where you can find Pokemon from other regions that weren't originally in Diamond and Pearl. It would be an easy way to fix the fact that in the original games, there's almost no fire types in the Pokedex. You've got the Ponyta line, you've got the Magby line, you've got your starter, and I believe like Houndour you can get in Platinum. And that's pretty much it. There's a lack of fire types and that could be addressed with a great marsh that is one turned into a wild area and two has species from other regions. So you can also allow players to catch a bunch of other Pokemon that we didn't already get. The next thing that I want to see is the battle frontier from Platinum. Even though it wasn't in Diamond and Pearl, we had the battle tower in Diamond and Pearl. The battle frontier from Platinum needs to be in this game. You can't do what you did in Oras and just pretend that it's coming soon in the history of these worlds, but never give players access to it. You can't do that again. It's going to piss a lot of people off. It's going to annoy me, even though I don't even like I was never a Battle Frontier guy. I didn't play it. It wasn't something that I was excited for or bummed about, but I can tell that a lot of people wanted it. So they need to hit on that. The other thing that they need to do is they need to incorporate Garatina in some way. Whether it's totally changing the story and having all three of the legendaries at the climax with Cyrus at the top of Mount Coronet, or if you give Garatina the Delta episode treatment, which they did with Rayquaza and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and give him his own extra backstory. Maybe you involve uh, Sharon as the guy trying to get Garatina, even though Cyrus already failed with Dialga and Palkia. There's a lot of ways you could do it. The other thing that I've seen from some fans is that it's going to be running on the engine of Sword and Shield. 
And all I would say to them is, you have to deal with it. Is it the most striking, beautiful game in the world? No. Does it have its problems? Yes. Are there these little things that I incredibly am incredibly hopeful that Game Freak will address in these remakes? One being the size of certain Pokemon in battles, because it's it's a little ridiculous. Yes. But it's going to be on this engine. It's going to be on the Sword and Shield engine. It's part of this generation. And if if they make the games look more like the Crown Tundra and the Isle of Armor, as opposed to the base game, then I think there's even less of a reason to complain about the game engine because Crown Tundra is gorgeous. The environments in, in that expansion area are absolutely amazing. The towns and the characters and the themes all weave together incredibly well and give it that Gen 4 snowy feel. So I think they can obviously use this engine and maybe make some little incremental improvements, which I don't think is out of the realm of possibility. The last thing that I think we need to hit on is the use of Dynamax and Gigantamax. Now, a popular Pokemon YouTuber named Birdkeeper Toby did a whole video a couple weeks ago talking about how you could make this work. I agree with him that you can make it work. We'll see how they do it. I think it's obvious that Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing are going to be part of these remakes. It is the it's the signature feature of this generation. It's the mega evolution of this generation. It's the Z moves of this generation. Regardless of what I think personally about Dynamax and Gigantamax, I think it's going to be there. So they might as well do it in the best way possible. And I think the best way for them to do it is to introduce a bunch of new Gigantamax forms for Sinnoh Pokemon, but make it so the G-Max forms are not liberally used. I don't want a ton of new G-Max forms. Uh, I think like the Garchomps of the world, the starters, those kind of Pokemon can get G-Max forms. The legendaries will probably get G-Max forms. Maybe there's a whole event with Arceus now in these games where he gets a G-Max form. Who knows? I think you can make it work. You just have to be smart about it. With that being said, those are my initial thoughts on what this game is going to be. I'm going to hold off on creating a proper list of all my expectations and my wants until we get an announcement because I don't want to hype myself up even more than I am right now for this. But let me know what you think. Do you think we're getting Diamond and Pearl remakes this year? When do you think they're getting announced? And if they are, will we be getting them in the fall? That's when I think they're going to happen. It kind of fits with Game Freak's release schedule as of late. Or is there something else you want? Do you not want to see Diamond and Pearl remakes because you're worried they'll ruin the games? Do you think we need to see a different type of game? Do you think they're going to throw a curveball and give us a new Let's Go game or something of that nature? I would love to hear what you think down in the comments below, and let's start a conversation. There will 100% be more Pokemon content within the next couple months because we're going to see some game reveal soon, so then I'll be right here to cover it. Until the next video, I will talk to you all later. Peace out.